Hello everyone and welcome back to Priest Brothers Lines. Today I have a very special episode for you here. Today I'm going to show you how to wire up the easiest signals, I think, in all of O-Gage, and that is the Z-Stuff signals, like the one you see right here. So I recently bought these uh, through Ross Custom Switches, I guess that's who they sell through, and so I bought six of these for my layout. So these are the dz dash uh, 1065V. It is a single light, but of course it's an LED, so it has three different colors in there. This is the kind that I've always liked for this era that I'm going to be um, modeling. And I've been looking for signals for quite a while now. Uh, and I've, I've looked at some of the major ones. Uh, I know that there are K and R signals. I've seen some people use those signals. They seem nice. Uh, of course, there's the Atlas signals. Those seem really nice, too. Uh, the only problem with those signals is that there's basically two ways to uh, for them to operate. One is to use the isolated rail technique, which I have not planned for that, so I really can't use that way. And so, therefore, the only way I could really do it is with uh, local sensors <coughs> to pick up when trains go by. So I was considering doing that with uh, Atlas signals and was trying to find infrared sensors and I noticed the MTH ones looked pretty nice uh, but I can't find them on sale anywhere and the Lionel makes IR sensors but they look really fake they look more toyish plus from what I see there's like a big red screen on one side which doesn't look very nice and so then I'm like wait I know Z stuff makes stuff so let's see what they have. I was thinking to buy a Z stuff sensor because I know that they make sensors as well, and they do. But then I noticed the sensors they have, or the, the signals they have here, everything is built in. And with the way that I would have to do it, if I were to use the Atlas or the KNR, was I would have to buy a sensor, like a separate sensor, that would then have to be connected to the signal that would then have to be connected to power and it just seems like a lot of extra pieces if you want to see a good video on wiring up atlas signals you should definitely check out eric siegel's video about that he did like a two-hour video on wiring switches and wiring signals it's a really good video uh, so check that out if you're interested in the isolated rail technique or how to do signals with a individual sensor but then i saw z stuff's signals here and I'm like wait everything is built in the sensor is built in the the all the electronics are built in there's nothing else you have to buy you just buy the signal and everything you need is here and these particular signals were $75 I bought six of them it was $27 to ship all of them and I think I got a really nice deal here that everything is built in I don't have to buy any extra pieces I don't have to wire things to other things everything is contained right in this part down here the sensor is in here all the electronics are in here all you have to do is wire it to power and it works so we'll show you how that all works here so here we have my zw that i wired this one switch into and so it really again it has there's four wires coming out of it there's a white a black a red and a yellow all you need to do to get it to work right is to plug the red into the power and the black into the common and give it some power and it works there we go it's on got a green light on and it has an infrared sensor built into the side so if you pass right over it, it turns to red and then after a few seconds it'll turn to yellow and then again after a few more seconds it'll turn back to green there you go and you can do it just like that um, but you can have it even more prototypical and I'll show you about that here the directions are very well written and they're all right here uh, you can find these on their website um, but all you need is a 9 to 18 volt power I'm gonna run it off a of track power since my track power is 18 volts so I'm just gonna tie it directly into track power and again all you have to do is just do that and it'll work uh, you can't so it's set up to where four seconds will 
let me try that again. The signal, when you go in front of it, it'll be that color, it'll be red for four seconds. If nothing else passes through it, then it'll be yellow for three seconds, and then it'll be green. You can adjust that. If you read down here, it says, uh, you can set the time between the signals changing. All you need to do is put the yellow and white wires together before power is applied, then turn power on, and then the, the signal will flash one per second. And basically just hold those wires together for the desired time you want for the delay to be. And then once you have found the time that you like, remove the white and yellow wires from each other, and then turn the power off, and then it's set. So you can just you can determine that if you want it to just be three seconds, if you want it to be 10 seconds, up to 60 seconds, so up to a minute. Now my layout is very small, so really only a few seconds would be necessary. But with the way I'm going to do it, by creating blocks, I don't have to worry about that really, and I'll show you that right now with three signals put all together on the ZW. So there are a few different options here that you can do, because there is also a yellow and a white wire. So I'm choosing to use option A as it fits what I needed to do. It says if the white wire of a signal down track is connected to the yellow wire of an up track signal, the up track signal will hold on caution, yellow, until the down track signal goes off stop to red. So what that means is that I connected the yellow wire from this signal to the white wire of this signal, which is down from it. And then again, the yellow wire from this signal to the white wire of this signal. And then to complete it, the yellow wire from this signal goes around to the, to the white wire on this signal. So yellow to white, yellow to white, yellow to white. So let's try it from this angle here. So you're going through the block here and you go through this block right here. And so that stays red, that'll stay red. And then you go through the next block here, that'll go red, and this one, the first one, will go yellow. And you continue to make motion through there, that'll continue to be on yellow. And then you go through the final block here, that goes red, the middle one will go to yellow, and the first one will go to green. And there we see it. And then looping around, first one will go back to yellow, and then we go through this block again. This will stay at red, the middle one will stay at green, the last one will stay at yellow. There we go. Oh, see, I wasn't, I wasn't picking up my motion. <laughs> and then again, this will work a lot better once it's on the track and not like shooting directly up into the light. That's probably not great for the sensor. <laughs> and then move into the next block over here. Then again, the middle one should go yellow. The first one should go green. And then back through the first block. Go red there. And just like that. So I'll show you the diagram here of how this is all going to be set up. So this may look kind of messy, uh, but just visualize the layout from above. So here are the two loops, the, the pencil lines are the two loops, and each signal here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm dedicating my two loops, one loop, the outside loop will go counterclockwise, and then the inside loop will go clockwise. So the outside loop, there'll be a signal in this area, in this area, and then over in this area. And in the inside loop, there'll be a switch in that area, in that area, and in that area. So what I've done here, the red and black show the bus line that I have under my layout, and that is for the track power. And so all I'm going to do is just run a line from the bus to power each individual signal that you see here. And then also what I've done is to show the yellow and white wires, I've, I used blue instead of white since you know white wouldn't show up on white paper, uh, but basically down track the yellow wire goes and then connects to the white wire and then again down track yellow wire will connect to the white wire and then down track yellow wire will connect to the white wire. And then the same thing on the inside goes this way, down track, yellow, connects to the white, 
down track yellow connects to the white and then down track yellow connects to the white and that's really all there is to it so you just got to install the switch or sorry I keep saying switch the signal and these signals uh, do have platforms that you can put screws or nails in here so I'll probably end up using nails and then they're just temporary down there. You just have to drill a very small hole to get the wires through. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I do want to mention quickly the only flaw that I see with these signals is that the red, black, and white wires are exposed on the back side, which is slightly annoying if you're going for a nice realism. But no problem at all. Just get some black paint and voila. You hardly even notice it anymore. And you really don't notice it when it doesn't focus on the wires. <laughs> it's not going to focus on it. But anyway, that's all you got to do. Just get a little black paint, cover it up, good to go. So here is the first signal installed. And again, all I've done so far is just giving it power. Just running it off of track power, red to red, black to black. It's not connected to any other signal, and I just secured it down with this one screw. And you'll notice that it's not entirely flat, it's because the table is not flat. So I just put it down at one point, just try to make it as level as possible. And then I'll just scenic around it, put some bushes, and a little grass to cover up. I'll probably put a little bush over that screw head just to cover that up too. And as we can see, as of right now, something going in front of it, it turns red. As long as there is something in front of it, it'll stay red, but once it passes it, or once, yeah, maybe it needs motion still, but once it passes it, a few seconds will go by, to yellow, and then to green. And so this is the innate problem with just having signals only on the, just off of power. Now, of course, you can change the, uh, the, the, the timing but that's why creating the blocks will be useful because once it's plugged into the other signals then they'll be talking to each other and they'll know what is in each area. So that's what I'll do next. Just keep putting more signals in. And uh, we can see here as I painted those oh, I just hit it. I painted the wires so that they just appear black. They're not as obvious as they were before. I decided I would show how to do the delay for the light, and it's very simple. So again, just plugged in, red and black, and then it tells you to turn the power off and then plug in the white and yellow wire. So that's what I've done here using these connectors. Again, I've showed you these connectors. They're so easy, it's so nice. So I've just connected the red to the white, and then when you apply power, the light will start to flash. The red light will flash, and however many times it flashes is the number of seconds before the light changes. So I'm gonna set it to 10 seconds. So we'll turn power on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then disconnect the red and white. Disconnect the red and white, there we go. All right, turn power off. That was probably closer to 11 or 12 seconds because it took me a little delay there. Uh -huh. Take that away. And then power green signal and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. And then again counting down. Same thing. Another ten to fifteen seconds. And back to green. So if you don't want to connect them you can do that just to have more of a delay. I added a little bit more delay just to, just to have that in there. So that's how you do that. It's very simple, very simple setup. I love it so much. All right, well, here we go. I have three sw uh, f well, switches, three signals on the inner loop. I put two on the exterior loop just because I don't want to put the third one in yet because obviously this side is not done at all. And when I do start working on here, I will remove the signals so that I don't hit them and damage them when I'm climbing on the table. But I did want to get one loop set up here. So we can see here that this light here is green. 
And then if we go around here, there's this signal right here, which is red, because the train is still going by it. And then right over here, we have this signal for the outer loop. But then the inner loop signal, this one right here, should be yellow. Yeah, so it is yellow because there is still a train in the block there, so it's a caution there. So let's go ahead and run. Let's get that engine going. And this one should turn green. Once the, once the train leaves the block right in front of it, it should go green here. Which I think it just turned green. Let's watch our train go by.
this setup video. I didn't see any other YouTube videos about these signals, at least nothing in depth about them. So I hope this will fill that void on YouTube of these signals. So if you do have any questions about them, please let me know. I'll answer what I can. But thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. This is Priest Brothers Lions.